attractive to being uh, messy with design. Mm -hmm. You can actually be very deliberate in designing an open system. And mm -hmm. that, that is what the best digital products do, is they allow for that reinvention and that evolution, but these are experiences still clean, usable, intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it means for architecture and city planning, but I think it's a conversation that needs to happen because we were talking earlier today about you know the spaces that seem to intuitively be able to reinvent themselves, like factory space. It's not the sexiest space in the world, but the fact is you can you can reinvent this space a dozen times over, and and so it's inherently an open system, right? Um, and I find that really interesting, um, but architecture is not my background, so it's kind of interesting to me to hear from the architectural perspective, you know, how can you do that where you a little bit more deliberately design for a space or a city environment where you expect evolution to occur, and you at some level plan for that evolution? Well, I think actually the, the analogy I would draw to what you do is that a large part of, of the, and just speaking to the YouTube environment at the moment, is about self-expression, right? And the, 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 the framework that you create online that allows people to have that freedom of self-expression is the architecture of your site, or of the architecture of that device. And, and in a similar way, I think what you want are cities that have that architecture or that structure in place, but that allow for creativity and self-expression that isn't limited by that. So that one becomes the backdrop for the other. But you, I, think, I think so many things in life are about the interplay between structure and absence of structure. Well, that's, I mean, I think it's interesting to pause on because, in fact, you could argue that there is a, there is a kind of historical trajectory which looks at architecture as well, and more specifically urban design in terms of historical systems. And, you know, one can think of Shumi, for instance, one can think of a lot of the works about May, which are about producing, say, urbanistic logics, which aren't totalizing, which aren't kind of, don't fall into the category of the master plan, but presumably allow for this notion of kind of sort of quasi organic growth or kind of appropriation by multiple users. Um, you know, and, and this can clearly be also kind of connected to sort of older manifestos of how one engages the city or thinks it's a situation as for instance. That the idea that the, the physical format might be constricting in a certain way, but there's the kind of possibility of kind of reinventing and re reinterpreting in a number of ways. One is through occupation and, and use, as in the kind of case of the situationist. But the other is the, the kind of architectural question which often comes up, which is can you design um, when design is, of course, inherently about the limitation of possibilities and the imposition of structure for a condition that kind of maximizes the possibility of reinterpretation of kind of, that kind of uh, let's say, uh, uh, that sort of uh, an open enough structure to allow for um, something to be utilized in many radically different ways.